All right, Rhoda, thanks for joining us. I'm uh, happy to be here. <laughs> so the first question is, um, what was your most memorable experience while you were president of the VASDS? Oh my, my mem most memorable experience was uh, sitting with my closest friends, uh, Gary Monheit, Alistair Carruthers, and Ron Moy, and trying to keep the Mohs surgeons from forming their own society and leaving us. Ooh, Ultimately, we lost that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that is something I'll never forget. But there were a few good things that happened. We expanded services to residents. We started our branding program. And uh, a lot of new things happened at that time. Yeah. And in the end, the Mohs surgeons sort of came back around and are still part of. Thank the goodness, because I think it's so important for us to be together. Right. All right. And at that time, when you were president, what years were you president? 2005. Okay. 2006. What were the most pressing issues at that time that faced the society? Well, the, the Mohs issue was a very big issue, increasing membership. As a matter of fact, I have just gone back on the board as historian, parliamentarian, and I was thinking how similar it was to just what happened then, because you're always worried about membership and the annual meeting and all of these things, and residents and uh, getting, uh, uh, getting more members, new members, and involved members. And so over the, what is it, 15, 14, 15 years there, what do you notice that's different about the board meeting and structure? And well, there are more women on the board, mm -hmm. and there are certainly many more things available. I mean, from the app at this meeting, which is terrific, uh, that was not even dreamt of then, the uh, attention to social media, which really didn't exist then because it was in the early days of... Uh, social media, and so there are a lot of different things that we have to deal with now. Mm -hmm. um, what were the most significant innovations when, you know, back in 2004, or five, six, that were going on within the dermatologic surgery? Well, we would never had a uh, unified brand, uh, the logo, uh, the starting of currents, all of these things uh, really came over the next few years. But the, the most wonderful thing about being on the uh, board and then the executive committee was the people, because they're, they're just great, and it, uh, you make lasting friendships, and it's a wonderful experience to be president of VASDS. Absolutely. <clears throat> on to your sort of career as a dermatologist and dermatologic surgeon. Um, how did you first get interested in dermatology? Well, I was always interested in surgery, and actually, I, I got the first residency offered to a woman at NYU in surgery when I found I was pregnant, and I really had to think about what I wanted to do and, and what I thought would work with having a child. And I, I was walking in front of NYU, where I went to school, and I, uh, as someone said to me, you know Rudy Bear, who was the chief of dermatology at NYU at that time, gives great advice. So uh, I said, well, I would never be a dermatologist or a pediatrician, but I would love advice. So we went in, and he said to me, you know, my residency's a field for the next two years, but if you want advice, that I'll give you. And I spoke to him for one hour, and he said, you have one minute. If you say yes, you can be a resident here. And I said, yes, and it was, Oh, just a lucky and serendipitous experience. Well, dermatology is fortunate that you made that good snap decision. It goes both ways. <laughs> and in your career, do you have a, a most memorable patient that you can think of? I'm sure there are many. You know, uh, I've had so many patients over the years, and I think it's, it the, it's the ones you can help the most that really make a difference to you. Uh, I was instrumental in bringing liposuction to this country and doing two mess and liposuction, and I used to see people with terrible divots all over them, and, and I learned how to mark them so I could take fat from one place and put it in another and make it so that they could go out again. That was wonderful, and now I find that uh, I can treat patients with filler and other problems and help them. Of course, you can't help everybody, but the ones you can help, it makes a big difference. 
If you look back on your career, would there be anything that you would change? No, a lot of things that happened to me happened by serendipity and because I came into this uh, field of, of uh, dermatologic surgery so early, all my mentors were men. And so, because there, were no, there was nobody else to mentor me and so they've always been supportive and uh, I've been very lucky that way that everybody's been supportive. And actually, uh, I went to Paris to learn liposuction on a lark. It was Paris. Uh, I was young and I wanted to see if I could actually go to a meeting by myself without my husband. If you know me, you know I'm always with my husband. And I went to this meeting and after the first two days, everybody went to see Paris, but I had been there before. And they let me do surgery for the next three days. And sometimes the anesthesiologist and both doctors would leave the room and leave me alone with the patient. And the nurse said to me, what's your name? And I told her, Jane Doe. <laughs> so Dr. I brought Jane a Doe. machine home. <laughs> this was 1982. And uh, the rest was history. Well, how difficult was it to introduce a new technique to a country that wasn't ready for it? And you being a woman at, at that well, time. Well, the thing is, when I went to Paris, I didn't believe it would work. I was kind of shocked that it would work. And the reason that liposuction worked at that time, before, before even the Tomesson technique, was because Yves Luz, uh, a French doctor, he, he developed a blunt-tipped cannula before they had been using sharp, so there was so much bleeding. And he injected a dilute fluid into the uh, it wasn't even lidocaine, into the uh, tissue, and that also decreased bleeding. So his patients went home, and there were a few doctors doing it with the other technique, and their patients were in the hospital with drains for days. So this made it a doable procedure. And of course, in 1985, Jeff Klein, a uh, a, a dermatologist on the West Coast called me up and said, you know, we can't use general anesthesia. Can I send you some equipment and see if you can do it this new way that I have? I call it tumescent liposuction. Well, I did one case and then I never went back to general because it was, it was unbelievable. The patient could talk to you during the procedure and it, the procedure really worked. So it was a wonderful experience. And so much safer that way too. Yes, so much safer. And what advice would you give today's young dermatologic surgeons? Well, to learn everything that they can. In, a, in those days, I would call people up and go to their offices, and I must have gone to 20 or 30 offices, and not just dermatologists. I went to people in, in uh, other specialties as well, uh, plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons, and they were happy to have me there. And so I learned a lot of new techniques, and I think when you're young, that's the time to learn those techniques. Absolutely. Do you have any predictions for the future of the ASDS? Well, I just find this society wonderful. Uh, I went to the first meeting as a resident and I saw all, all the important people in my mind that started this society from Orantrix or Resnick, a whole group of them and I always wanted to be them. And so uh, I think this society offers so much uh, even just from the person sitting next to you at the annual meeting, it's a wonderful society to belong to. So I see it continuing and uh, uh, growing and more residents uh, belonging, and, and I, I'd like to see that happen. So what advice do you have for the ASDS leadership in serving its membership in the future? Well, I think they always have to worry about uh, new members and keeping them happy and making sure that uh, they continue with uh, hands-on courses and the small courses around the country and uh, letting the younger people do a lot of lecturing so that they come up. I think the uh, uh, Future Leaders Network has been excellent and that should continue. And uh, I think that they, having been to this last board meeting, they have it well in hand. Thank you. Any other last words? Anything else you want to let people know? Well, this is my favorite society. I love the ASDS. Uh, I like the social events. I like seeing my friends. Uh, 
many of them have become my best friends and the people that we travel with and go everywhere with. Just going to meetings, we wind up with them more than we do uh, with anybody else. So it's been a wonderful experience. Thank and you, of Rhoda. course, Kathy is great. <laughs> Kathy is great. That's our mantra. Thank you, Rhoda. Okay.